Excellent. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Jasmine DeHillig. Um, I'm an engineer, software engineer on the Nomad team, and I'm here to tell you about Nomad, modern scheduling for modern applications. So if you're here today watching HashiCorp virtual days, then you're pretty familiar probably with the problem of multi-cloud and deploying all of your containers or virtual machines, basically moving your applications from um, cloud, from your you know, pets instances that you manage yourself to provisioning it on the cloud for really efficient infrastructure. Um, and you're probably familiar with, or if you're here, you're lear you've learned a little bit about console, vault and terraform but today we're going to talk or right now we're going to be talking about nomad how you run actually run those applica applications that are connected on the cloud so the need for a modern orchestrator when you find yourself moving to containers and clouds that got really great um, you're going to be moving your mi migrating your legacy applications from your on-prem instances maybe to the cloud maybe some of them are staying in your data center cluster um, and you have to kind of deploy it all and migrate these applications over time. But if you've done this before, you know that it's not like a one month project. It could be a, a few months, it could be weeks, it could be in some cases I know a few years if you choose the wrong infrastructure. Or what I'm saying is if you choose a tooling methodology um, perhaps a platform that doesn't really fit well with your existing legacy applications. Uh, it can take a lot of work, a lot of configuration, and a lot of uh, handholding or managing that you wanted to avoid in the first place with your pet instances. And so when you get to this point where you need to containerize all your apps and you need to move it to the cloud or move it to your on-prem data centers, the question that you find yourself asking is how? How do we do this quickly, efficiently, and easily? And some uh, challenges here are like lack of time, budget, really increased complexity. You have to operate a ton of different instances just to maybe manage your cluster uh, and to deploy them and then not, not including your actual applications themselves. So with Nomad, we try to bring you a solution. One workload orchestrator that allows you to orchestrate any type of application on various different uh, infrastructures. A single orchestrator for the cloud. So what we want to introduce with Nomad is a way to run your Windows VMs, your Docker containers, your Java uh, jars, any application binary on any cloud infrastructure, including especially your on-prem data center. So I'm going to go in really quickly, talk about how to use Nomad. It's a very simple workflow. You have your users, which are your devs or your operators, um, and they have jobs that they need to submit, applications that they need to run, uh, web applications, load balancers, log shippers, anything you could think of, um, and deploy it to the Nomad server. When you send it to the server, it quickly evaluates the state of the cluster and decides, okay, which of these client nodes am I going to deploy the job to? And here's a sample Nomad uh, job config. Don't worry about it too much. If you're familiar with Terraform, Vault, or Console, it uses the same HCL format. You can also submit it with JSON. Don't worry about this too much because we'll go over it in depth in a bit. So first, before I get into what jobs are you running, I need to talk about the ontology a little bit. So a job is what you can think of as like a typical like application stack. Like maybe you have like your main application and then you have like your web proxy uh, and perhaps a log shipper and a bunch of different apps that together put together your full application service. Now a task, uh, a, a group within a job is a series of tasks that are going to be co-located onto a particular client node. Uh, and the client node is where the work is actually done. It's where the container or the execu executable or the jar is actually uh, run. And the task, you can have multiple tasks within a group. So several tasks co-located on the same client node. And a task is like one-to-one -one with the actual uh, workload uh, that's being executed, such as the container or a uh, jar, et cetera. 
And you can run different, you can different type of scheduling of workloads. You could have a batch scheduler, which kind of does short lived workloads for ephemeral reports, transactions, um, or you could have a service scheduler, which uh, will run long standing service applications. And then there's also the system system type jobs that are for uh, to be run on every single node in your cluster uh, to perform logging, monitoring, security, or other types of background processes. So running any type of workload on the cluster means that there have to be different task drivers um, on the client node. So the client node, again, is where the workload is actually being executed. But how does it know to run? So we have, for example, the Docker task driver, which will be configured onto a client node. It knows to run Docker, uh, it knows how to download uh, the container from the Docker registry, or you can have different types of task drivers that just run a raw exec binary, uh, a binary or like a jar um, or a virtual machine in particular. That's one of Nomad's uh, strengths. Um, different types of ways to deploy your jobs. You can do rolling updates or blue green deploys for really efficient, high availability deployment strategies. So there's no downtime and you don't have to configure that kind of deployment, like checking if it's okay, and then, you know, keeping this one alive and then rolling it down. Nomad takes care of all of that for you automatically. So operating Nomad, Nomad architecture is, we will try to make it easy on our operators and on our users, um, which means a single binary to submit schedule and execute workloads. So it's the same binary that you have for the Nomad servers and the Nomad clients. Nomad servers for the, form the control plane for scheduling. They have an assessment of like what all the client nodes, uh, how much capacity they have and what jobs are currently running on them. Um, and you could have a number of server nodes that all communicate through the raft consensus protocol. And the clients actually have the task drivers on the machines uh, to be able to execute the work. So the clients talk to the servers. Um, this is an example of what a single region would look like. And now for the demo. So first thing I have going on is um, an AWS cluster of Nomad or AWS EC2 instances. That is my Nomad cluster. So what I have here, Nomad server members. Um, I have one Nomad member or one Nomad server that's running. Nomad node status and three uh, client nodes. So the server is again what's doing the scheduling. It has an understanding of how busy the whole cluster is and then the nodes are what actually are doing the work. So here I have three uh, nodes, client nodes that are ready to accept work. So break to the demo. First thing we're going to do is look at our simple, very simple um, example job that can be generated by Nomad just for you to get started and see like what's happening. So uh, So here we have a sample job generated that's just a very simple uh, Redis server. It uses the Docker driver. I believe Docker, the Docker driver is automatically um, included in uh, the Nomad configuration uh, for every client. It specifies the image and then it maps the port, which if you're familiar with Redis, that's like the default port. And it has, it specifies the resources, CPU, memory, of which I've very much put less than my micro instances in AWS. And then it has this network bit, which we're not going to explain yet, save for later. So nomad run. And I'm going to go to the website so we can see what's happening. Don't worry about this yet. That's we'll get to in a sec. So run the job example. So this little progress bar that's happening here, first, before the Nomad runs the job, it has, before the Nomad client runs the job, it has to download the container. And then it's ready to be run and it's running. And this is the UI. You could also do like 
no add job status, sample, see the full thing, uh, and then dive into a little bit later, you can see the deployment was completed successfully. And now you could zoom in. So going back to the Nomad ontology, uh, we have the um, deployment here, which completed successfully. Then we have the task group, which is the cache task group. You can see the memory allocation, zoom in a little bit, see the allocations of it. So the Nomad term allocation is correspond one to one with task group. An allocation is an instance of a group of nodes that are all co-located on one client. So you could have multiple of these allocations for the same task group if you want to deploy them to different clients, which I'll show in a second. Um, click into that and then you could actually see instance of all the tasks that are actually running. If you click further, you could see a little bit of the resource utilization information, events that Nomad has observed has happened, and you could also introspect into your tasks by looking at the logs, Redis, and the file system. So now going back to the jobs page, I want to go over a little bit more about deployments. I talked a little bit about uh, rolling deployments, blue-green blue deployment strategies. So if we go back to this example, then we can change the count in the task group. And also bump the memory just a little bit, just enough to be scheduled on the micro instances. And we could see what will happen with Nomad Plan. So Nomad Plan is very similar to Terraform Plan. It will give you an idea of all the changes that are going to be happening. It's going to create two um, and ignore one. And then it will force create uh, and destroy, update the one that's already existing. So let's run it. We could see it happen in real time. So over here, you see the progress bar, there's stuff happening. So it's place two, and it's desired is three. So it, it can be kind of confusing to see, um, you know, you see like, oh, there's more than the actual account that I desired. Well, that's because it's doing a rolling deploy. It spins up an instance, make sure that it's healthy first, and then it'll roll back the existing instances until the deployment completed successfully. Um, and really quick, I'm going to uh, go over another demo. So another simple thing that you may want to do is deploy a web server with a load balancer. Um, and here we have a group, the similar thing, place three uh, instances of this gr uh, task group, which will be three allocations, so one for each node. Um, this one is also using a Docker driver with the HTTP D Apache, um, and it uses a console service stanza. So that's one thing that's really excellent about Nomad is that it integrates with a uh, console and vault out of the box. And it's already running for us to see. And, oh, I also forgot to show the Fabio one. So the Fabio one here, we have the Fabio Docker image, and then we um, have these ports in the resource network stanza. So the web server is running, Fabio is running, and then we can see, oh, no, we can see Fabio if we go to 998, and then we can see the web server, which is routed by 999. So, Wrapping up the presentation really quickly. Nomad is doing a lot of excellent new features, or it has a lot of existing features. Um, not enough time to talk about the scheduling process. Um, but it does have native integration with Vault and Console. Uh, this is an example of a Vault stanza, so where you could do secrets management with Vault in Nomad, your Nomad jobs. And you could also do service discovery, which will allow services to find each other and health check monitor all applications 
uh, which also works with deployments, rolling things back if it's not healthy. And uh, our native console connect integration for sidecar proxies for applications. We have a lot of ecosystem integrations, uh, including a few monitoring integrations. And especially I want to highlight our device plugin um, extensibility. So if you wanted like our existing plugin, a uh, GPU plugin for NV NVIDIA GPUs, and you want to do like machine learning applications, like you can do that with Nomad. And our team has been really active as of late. So we're releasing Nomad 11 general release or general GA this week. And it comes with a lot of great features, uh, such as task dependencies, which will allow you to specify interdependent applications and specify a level of granularity between your tasks and even uh, inter-job tasks. Container storage interface, so we're going a step beyond host volumes and implementing a CSI for Nomad, allowing you to use any storage provider of choice. Auto scaling is a hot topic, um, being able to dynamically scale your application instances um, in a lot of different ways, adjusting the Excuse me. Uh, and also the remote exec UI, which allows you to execute commands in the allocations through the Nomad UI for faster operability. And last but not least, can't forget our enterprise. Uh, we recently implemented audit logging, which is really important for security, uh, governance, and policy, policy if you want to be able to know uh, what's going on in all of your clusters for auditing. There you go. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to get started with Nomad, there's the project website, which has our docs. Um, I highly recommend the learn guides. The Fabio example is there to uh, quickly get you started with Nomad. And also, if you'd like to contribute, we have the GitHub repo.